Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake aka Tag, and today we're back at it again with quite possibly the most unfair deck I have ever played in Clash Royale. Believe it or not, the Sparky Skeleton Dragon Rage deck three crowns faster than Elixir Golem Night Witch did at its strongest point. All you have to do is start a Sparky in the back, then you follow up with a Goblin Giant, rage up your Skeleton Dragons or your Mini Pekka with the Sparky, and Heal Spirit to keep it all alive, and your opponent will not be able to stop it. If you're able to successfully heal up your Sparky, rage it up so it gets extra hits, and zap away all your opponent's distractions, you're going to be getting a lot of 3 crowns. So let's go jump straight to some games that assert some dominance with the best 3 crown deck in Clash Royale. And a huge shout out to all of you guys that are supporting me with creator code SIRTAG in any Supercell game. All money made from creator code SIRTAG goes directly back into improving the channel with the editing and the upgrades to the setup. And it allows me to upload on a daily basis while taking full-time college courses. So thank you guys for supporting me. All right, we got a game here. We're going to sauce out a good luck and we're going to see what's up. What is this man going to have? What is he going to do? Well, we can Sparky in the back and find out if he goes and drops anything of substance. We just kite it right into our Sparky with the Goblin Giant. He's going to go for Firecracker and he's going to go opposite lane with Bats. Dude, I can ignore that and three crown you. What are you doing, man? Are you insane? I know you are insane, but I, I can't believe that. So I am going to go for Mini Packer so I don't take too much damage here. Usually I just ignore completely, but I can save my tower and I can get counter push in both lanes and three crowns. So might as well do that, right? So if your opponent tries to go off his lane to Sparky, even if they've got Royal Delivery, Goblin Cage, you guys can see how miserable it is for them. Oh my goodness. Are we going to three crown in like 30 seconds? Is this is how it goes? Is this what we do in Clash Royale, guys? Yeah. Okay. GG, man. Good luck in the next game. I'm sorry. So it begins. If your opponent tries to go and punish you off his lane, this is quite often what happens, even when they have Royal Delivery, Goblin Cage, and a plethora of distraction capabilities. It just doesn't matter. All right, guys, we got a game here. We're gonna sauce out a good luck and we're gonna see what's up. What's happening, brother? What are you gonna be doing today? So, since we've got Skeleton Dragons, since we've got Skeleton Dragons, I can actually go in for a Musketeer in the back. I don't wanna wait until Double Elixir, so that's what we're gonna do. And he's gonna go Golem in the back. First play. This man, he's got to do me like that when I don't have my Sparky. So, the way I want to play this is I want to go in for Goblin Giant on the left-hand side, and I want to go in for Skeleton Dragons as well. So, I'm going to lose the Musketeer. I know that. That's a fact here, guys. But, I can keep it alive a little bit longer with the Heal Spirit so that the Bats don't immediately just thrash me. And then I can potentially go in for a Mini Packer right after. So, we will take out the left-hand tower, and the Goblin Giant with the Skeleton Dragons are going to do a lot of damage to the Ice Wizard. However, we will Tower Trade. So... As long as I don't get 3 crowned, I'm chilling. So I'm going to go for a Musketeer here. He's going to be able to cripple those Golemites. And then I think I zap. Just so we're going to be able to eliminate the bats if he starts spawning even more. Yeah, he's not spawning too many. But now he is. So we got to go in for the Zapparino. Shut down that extra Dark Prince hit. And then get the Musketeer in the lane that we want. So he's got a lot of damage on our 3 crown. We're going to be going to pressure in his 3 crown at the same time. This is going to be a bit more of a dicey game. Just specifically because of my card cycle. Not having the Sparky. Where were you? So he did use Barb Barrel. I think we want to go in for a Goblin Giant here and then heal it up because he's going to drop something right on top of the Musketeer that we'll be able to uh, keep it alive with, right? Oh my gosh, we just decimated everything. And then, if you look at what just happened, that Night Witch is going into the tower that he doesn't want to go for. So we're not going to spend Elixir defending that. The Ice Wizard is going to die. We can start to slow roll a Sparky and 3-crown him if he goes in for a Golem. We want to be up Elixir here, guys. That is what we need. We don't care about anything else besides an Elixir advantage because... Two to 300 tower chip damage. That only matters in chip decks. Building up massive pushes. Having three or four more elixir for an extra mini pack or, you know, skeleton dragons. That can be the deciding factor in these games. So, yeah, here we go. I'm going to go for mini pack. I'm going to be able to go and pull the dark prince. And then we can go in for a goblin giant right in front. So, this is going spectacularly for me. And, of course, we could also go for the heal spirit after. Oh. Notice how we timed that as well, guys. You guys saw the Barbarrel? It attacked the Heal Spirit and not the Sparky. So if we're able to win the game, it's specifically because of that play that I just did. Oh my goodness, the Mini Pack is still alive too. Wait, guys, if we're able to kill all that, keep the Skeleton Dragon alive, I can go in for a Goblin Giant. I can rage this up. We can assert the dominance, my dudes. Oh, let's go, Goblin Giant. Get onto the tower. We know you want it. We know you need it. That is the one thing that we want from you in life. And that is a delectable amount of damage. So I'm going to go for Sparky here. I can go Goblin Giant Mini Pack on the right. If he decides to go in for a Golem, I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to fall for our trap card. He's definitely going to Golem. Go, 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 go. 
so that's what we wanted to see. We go in for the Goblin Giant, we go in for the Mini P.E.K.K.A., and we heal Spirit. Then I can zap right on top of the bat, so then the Sparky decimates his spam with the Golem. And then we rage up, so then the Ice Wizard... Wait! No way! I was like, the Mini is gonna go towards the Ice Wizard! But guess what? The Mini P.E.K.K.A. 300 IQ goes right onto the tower. He has his priorities set in life, and that tower was ours. That game was perfect, man. That was such a fun win. GG and well played. Let's move on to the next one, and let's keep asserting dominance. All right, we got a game here. Running under the rainbow with our Sparky deck. What's happening, brother? What are you rocking today? I can just go for a zap and get to my Sparky. Maybe we can entice him to drop something because we cycle the zap. Let's go. So usually we never want to get the double elixir when we see Baby Dragon because that's going to be indicative of a graveyard deck, a golem deck, or elixir golem deck. And those matchups are quite miserable for us Ow. if we get to that stage. Okay, he's going to have lightning. All right, man. So that was really well played going for the lightning and predicting that I was going to mini P.E.K.K.A. So you're out quite a bit of damage there, man. And I'm going to give you a well played because I wasn't expecting that one, Chief. I'm going to go Sparky in the back, and we're going to go and slow roll a massive push. So, he's going to go gold opposite lane. Wait, do you actually think that you can defend this now? You dropped 8 Elixir, you don't have Lightning. Oh, you're in a world of pain right now, my dude. The suffering that you're about to endure, you're not ready. Your body isn't prepared. Then go for a Heal Spirit after you drop a small spell. Oh, you're really... He's not dropping anything. Does he think that he can 3 crown race a... Uh, Skeleton Dragon Sparky Duck and racing. Is he out of his mind? What is he doing? <laughs> this guy is wiped. <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself? Do you not understand how much damage Sparky does, sir? Well, let's just add that to the three crown collection and move on to the next one. We're gonna go for a tennis ball here. We're gonna see what's up. We're gonna see what's happening. He's gonna go Golem in the back first play right out of the gate. Scorpion's trying to sting me with those golems, man. I do what I want, when I want. As long as you don't have Electro Dragon, we're 110% chilling. So what are you going to drop behind your golem? It's going to be very difficult for you to afford a Lightning, Supporting Cards, and the golem all at once. So what I can do here is I can Mini P.E.K.K.A., I can go for a Musketeer, and we should be able to obliterate the golem without taking too much damage. In Double Elixir, that's where it gets dicey, though, because you guys already know... He's able to afford the lightning, and then his pushes are going to be a little bit more scary for me. So I'm going to let the Musketeer fall. He's not going to be able to get any real chip damage with the Baby Dragon. And his Golem is out of cycle, so what is he going to do? He's probably going to cycle something in the back. Yes! So we go in the opposite lane as soon as we predict that, and we get the Skeleton Dragons coupled with the Goblin Giant. So that's going to give us a lot of value. That's going to be a drastic amount of damage on the tower. The Spirit Goblins and the Skeleton Dragons beat out so much Elixir. And then we can follow up with the Heal Spirit because we want to go and cycle back to a Mini P.E.K.K.A. Just so we're going to be able to kill all the bats from the Night Witch a little bit quicker. And then he's still going to have to respond to the Mini P.E.K.K.A. So what are you going to do? Or are you going to take a hit? He's not going to take the hit. Usually people eat that damage like a snack, especially when their left hand tower is so low. They're like, oh, I can afford to do that. But over time, it's very insidious and you can get a lot of chip damage that way if they ignore Mini P.E.K.K.A. hits. So uh, it's good for us that he did ignore that because I, I would have felt less comfortable if he just spammed us with a golem in the back. But, you know, sometimes it does benefit you in the end. So I'm going to go in for a Sparky here, and I probably want to go in for a lot of units that are not going to be lightning prone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in for a Goblin Giant, I'm going to go in for Skeleton Dragons, and I will rage this up as quickly as possible because I want to get as much damage as quickly as we can. If we're able to eliminate the baby dragon like that with the skeleton dragons, then we're going to get a great counter push, guys. Because the Sparky will still stay alive. We are going to be able to one-shot the mini P.E.K.K.A. with the Sparky. If you guys didn't know, that is a great play to do. And I could have heal spirited, but it wouldn't have allowed us to break through that. So it's going to go heal spirit in the left. And I expect him to go in for a golem in the back right. So I'm going to go Sparky in the left. Let's go. We've made two predictions on his golems this game, guys. We predicted the, the Night Witch in the back. Well, actually not a golem. We predicted the Night Witch in the back. And we went in the left-hand side. And the same thing with the Sparky. We want to go in the left-hand side here. Because we want to keep applying aggression so we can take out the tower with 26 seconds remaining. And then just get away with the mini pack on top of his golem. If he tries to defend, he can't defend the Sparky. And then he doesn't have Elixir to augment his golem. So he won't be able to break through the mini pack. One thing that I've realized in this matchup or with this Sparky deck. Because I don't have Fireball. It's really, really hard to deal and go same lane and double Elixir when they've got stacked up Skeleton Dragons. So what I try to do is I try to go opposite lane, predict their golem, try to tower trade, and then just defend with Mini P.E.K.K.A. if I can. So GG and well played Scorpion. Pleasure playing against you. It is so hard for you to defend against the Sparky Push when you cast 8 Elixir in the back with your golem. It's actually pretty much impossible. 
All right, we got a game here. We're gonna sauce out a good luck and we're gonna see what's up. What does this dude have in store for us? We can go for a Sparky in the back and we go kite everything into us. Okay, we're definitely gonna go for a Sparky now because you split Skeleton Dragons. That's four Elixir. That is wasted. You were wasted. You're always wasted. And that's all your damage per second as well. So I can go for a Goblin Giant here. Make sure that the Skeleton Dragon locks onto that, not our tower or the Sparky. And we'll see what you're gonna do, brother. You're gonna go for a Dank Prince. I love seeing Dark Princess cycled like that. That means I can go for a mini P.E.K.K.A, devour it a little bit quicker, and then go for a Heal Spirit. He's got P.E.K.K.A! Oh, let's go! This is gonna be so much fun. Usually P.E.K.K.A is a bit scary, but guys, when you've got this deck, when you've got the Sparky Rage, oh my goodness, the mini P.E.K.K.A ate the Electro Wizard alive! <laughs> I just can't believe how easy this deck is to play. You just take towers left and right by starting a Sparky in the back, Going in for Skeleton Dragons or Mini P.E.K.K.A with your Sparky and Heal Spirit and you rage it all up. And 99% of the time your opponent just can't defend. Every single minute, we just take a tower. And you know what? He's staying true to his name, guys. He's staying true to his name. I'm going to 3 card you. I don't care. I don't care. I legitimately do not care about the Bandit. I will never care about the Bandit. <laughs> and we'll see what you think about that, brother. Because I can go for a Skeleton Dragons with the Goblin Giant, and you probably go for a P.E.K.K.A on top of the Sparky to shut it down. But you're going to take a tremendous amount of damage, and I think that we're going to be able to keep the Sparky alive for two more P.E.K.K.A hits because of that. Actually, you know what? It didn't even die. If you go for a Heal Spirit plus Skeleton Dragon, you guys just saw that. You know, know that the P.E.K.K.A can't even kill that. That's broken, right? Skeleton Dragon plus Sparky plus Heal Spirit kills P.E.K.K.A. How does that work? All right, we got a game here. We're gonna go for a tennis ball and we're gonna see what's up. What is happening, my dude? Drop something that you don't want to cycle. Let's go. So he's gonna go for a skeleton. It's gonna be a fast cycle deck. Very well, could be 2.9 Expo or the detested Expo Rocket Cycle. And that's what I think we're playing against when we see the Isis are with Log. Usually when it's Graveyard, they're gonna have Barb Barrel. So this deck is gonna be a difficult matchup. Maybe, just maybe, we can beat out a Rocket on the Musketeer. I would love to see that. So then I can slow roll a Sparky and endure no consequences. I don't know if he's about that life. Yep, he's just gonna go in for the Tesla like a casual Expo player would. And I think what we can do here is we can go rage everything up, go in for our Skeleton Dragons and put in the mad work. So here we go. When he goes in for a log, we can probably keep everything alive now with the Heal Spirit and then keep the <laughs> Goblin Giant alive longer, keeping our Skeleton Dragons on the tower with the Musketeer locked on. That's going to be a delectable snack. And the Spear Goblins are still tanking for the Musketeer. No way. So guys, sometimes if your opponent overcommits and you're able to rage up and break past their Teslas with your offensive Musketeers, then you'll be able to make big plays. But your Sparky, it's not going to be that reliable because your opponent's going to have Rocket, right? So that's one of my main things is I don't really like playing Sparky too often in this matchup if I don't have to. We do, however, have a really good situation going where he might log again to cycle because he has a bad card cycle. We can go in for Skeleton Dragons here and rage everything up. So I'm waiting for him to log and then I'll go for the Heal Spirit. I don't want to go in for it too early because I think that he's going like, to just finish it off really easily. So don't want to give him a free log for no reason is what I'm trying to say. We take the tower already and we're in a commanding position to wreck this guy. With a minute left, all we have to do is defend and he might have just given up. Who knows? Because he's eating so much damage on the King Tower. So either he's going to go in the opposite lane on the left or he gave up. I don't know. Hey, there we go. When you destroy an Expo player's mental, there's nothing better than this. This is my most hated deck in Clash Route, and we just wrecked it with Sparky, which he should theoretically hard counter, because guess what? This man's got Rocket. It absolutely destroys Sparky, but we destroyed him. So we defy logic, and Sparky is just too strong. We're going to go for Heal Spirit here, and we're going to see what's up. This guy's going to go in for a Goblin Barrel. So we see Goblin Barrel... Most of the time, they're going to have Rocket. How are we going to deal with that when we have Sparky? Well, let's find out, boys. Wait, I could zap that, and then the Prince isn't going to get the charge on us, so we can get an extra bit of damage, and then I can go in for Skeleton Dragons. So, oh, okay. You're dropping a lot of Elixir. You're going to get the Prince Connection now. You are definitely getting that Ouch. Prince Connection. But I'm okay with it, because guess what I can do? I can go for a Musketeer, cripple your Princess, force out more Elixir, and then we go in for a Sparky in the back. So, my body is ready. You're going to be down so much elixir. And I can't wait to see what you do. Oh my goodness. He's going for rascals. Five elixir. Eight elixir with the goblin barrel. No way. This is going out of his mind right now with the elixir count. I can go in for a goblin giant here. That's, uh, that's a lot of... Uh... 
keep our Sparky alive, going for a heal spirit, rage everything up. Maybe we can force out a rocket. He's gonna go for a log. Oh, I was hoping that the Sparky hmm. would stay alive at an abysmal hmm. amount of HP, but we're in a bad spot now. We're actually in quite a disastrous situation. I shouldn't have zapped that because we're gonna lose the uh, tower anyway. Eventually. That's a crap ton of damage. That should have never worked. I don't understand how I won that game. Oh! Uh... 